In today's market update, we're going to be taking a look at the S&P 500, working with SPX data. We're going to be continuing our detailed discussion of what is happening in terms of the cycles unfolding in that market. Here is a slightly longer term picture of the analysis that we've been tracking in the S&P 500. Of course, we have a big magnitude cycle trough that formed in October of last year. That is probably a trough of 54 month magnitude, as we have discussed in recent market update videos. There is, of course, a big question mark surrounding the magnitude of this trough that formed at the end of October this year. You will notice that in this analysis, I have the 40 week cycle trough phased over here in late June. There are other possibilities for the position of that 40 week cycle, including this trough here in the middle of August. And of course, it is possible that the 40 week cycle trough only came in very late at the end of October this year. If you are new to Hearst Cycles analysis, you might find it a bit disconcerting that we have question marks surrounding the position of these cycle troughs. However, we are able to make very sensible trading decisions even when there is some uncertainty in the analysis, which is a point that I often make in these market update videos. And the way that we deal with that analysis is we ask ourselves what our level of confidence is in a particular trough. My level of confidence in this trough that formed at the end of October is of at least 80 day magnitude. In other words, I think the minimum magnitude of this trough is at the 80 day level. I think it is much more likely that this is in fact a trough of the 20 week cycle. As you can see, that dark green diamond indicates that in this analysis, the 20 week cycle trough has been phased at that time. I also think that it is possible that the 40 week cycle trough occurred at the end of October. That would have made that a very long 40 week cycle from the 54 month cycle trough that formed at the end of October last year, because 379 days is much longer than the average wavelength of a 40 week cycle, which Hearst discovered 50 years ago was 272 days. But as a Hearst Cycles analyst, we are able to put aside our uncertainty about the analysis and focus instead on our level of confidence, which as I've mentioned has to do with the magnitude of the trough that formed at the end of October, which is in my opinion of at least 80 day magnitude, possibly 20 week and maybe even 40 week. Working with the minimum possible magnitude of that cycle trough, we know that the next 80 day cycle trough is expected over here towards the end of December round about Christmas time. And the following 80 day cycle trough is over here, this rather neat nest of lows, which is centered around the end of February. Those are the important signposts that we have in terms of troughs forming in this market. And those are important times for the formation of troughs, regardless of the magnitude of this cycle trough, because of the fact that we know that it is of at least 80 day magnitude. As price has bounced out of this trough at the end of October, we have been able to track the cycle moves by watching the way in which price has interacted with some FLDs. In particular, here is the 20 day cycle FLD and the 40 day cycle FLD. At the foot of the chart, you can see the nest of lows for the next 40 day cycle trough. You can see that that nest of lows is centered around about the middle of last week. And so that is when we expected the 40 day cycle trough to form. You will notice that on Thursday of last week, price came down to the 20 day cycle FLD, found support at the level of that FLD and then bounced up again. That is a high probability point for the 40 day cycle trough to have formed. Now, I've mentioned in recent market update videos that this 40 day cycle trough would be expected to form by finding support at about the level of the 40 day cycle FLD. Why is that? It's because of the very reliable sequence of interactions that occur between price and these FLDs. FLD is of course an acronym for the future line of demarcation. It is a cycle tool that Hearst discovered 50 years ago, and it is a tool that I have found extremely useful in my trading and we have developed trading strategies on the basis of price interacting with the FLD. If the 40 day cycle trough did form last week, then it did so above the level
goal of the 40-day cycle FLD, which implies that there is still a good deal of bullishness in this market. That itself increases the chances that the magnitude of the cycle trough that formed at the end of October are greater than the 20-week cycle trough that we see marked on this chart. Is it possible that price is now only going to come down and form the 40-day cycle trough? Yes, it is possible, because if we measure the number of days that have elapsed from the trough at the end of October, you will see that as of today, we are looking at 38 days. The average length of the 40-day cycle is considered to be 34.1 days. And so it is possible that a 40-day cycle trough is going to form a little later rather than at the expected time in the middle of last week. Nevertheless, the chances are good that the 40-day cycle trough has indeed formed. So what are we expecting to happen next? Bear in mind that we are expecting an 80-day cycle trough round about Christmas time. Then what we have seen so far is the first 40-day cycle with a potential trough that formed last week. And now we are going to see the second 40-day cycle. And then, of course, price is going to come down into this 80-day cycle trough expected round about Christmas. So first question, is this next 40-day cycle going to be as bullish as the previous one, or is it going to be less bullish? The answer to that is that it will be less bullish. The reason for that has to do with the pressure of the 80-day cycle. The 80-day cycle was pushing upwards during this period of time. Following the 40-day cycle trough, the 80-day cycle must, of course, turn down. And so we are expecting a less bullish 40-day cycle to play out into the trough at the end of December. If we step back a little bit, there is something very important to notice here, which is, of course, this price high over here at the end of July, which is going to provide a natural resistance resistance level. And so while we are expecting price to bounce out of the 40-day cycle trough, we need to keep an eye on this level over here, which is where we will experience a natural level of resistance. That is by no means an absolutely hard level. Price could easily break up above that level. And so what are some possible targets to the upside that we could expect to see price reach? Of course, we can generate targets by means of watching the point at which price crosses the FLDs. You will notice the price crossed the 20-day FLD all the way back over here at the beginning of November, easily achieved that target. Price also crossed the 40-day FLD and has also achieved that target. So what about some longer FLDs? Let's take a look at some. Here is the 80-day cycle FLD. You will notice that the target generated by price crossing above the 80-day cycle FLD has also been achieved. The next longer FLD is the 20-week FLD. And you will see the price crossed above the 20-week FLD just a few weeks ago and has generated a target target to the upside. When it comes to the 20-week FLD, we should really look at the targets on a weekly chart as opposed to a daily chart. And so here is a weekly chart, and there you can see price crossing up above the 20-week FLD. We calculate the target by measuring the distance from this low point to the point at which median price crosses above the FLD, and the target that is generated as a result of this is right up here at a level of 48.50. And so there is some bullish potential still available to us in this market if price is to reach up and achieve that 20-week cycle target. Bear in mind that it must, probably on the way to achieving that target, form an 80-day cycle trough over here towards the end of December. And then it is likely to turn down and come down into this trough, the next 80-day cycle trough at the end of February, which you can see according to this analysis will also be a trough of the 20-week cycle and also the 40-week and possibly even the 18-month cycle. What about other FLDs? There's a very interesting 40-week FLD for us to look at. Here you can see the price crossed down below the 40-week FLD over here in early October. It has in recent price action come back up to the level of the 40-week FLD, and it has spent the past three weeks 
creeping along that FLD, if you like. It has so far, and there is only a little bit of overnight price action on Sunday night displayed on this chart, but it has so far managed to cross up above that 40-week FLD. Whether that cross up above the FLD is in fact a genuine one, we can only tell at the end of this week, when we can look back and see the median price for this week, to see whether it has succeeded in crossing above the FLD. If it does, then of course we will generate yet another target, which will probably be even higher than the target generated by the 20-week cycle FLD. While we're taking a look at this weekly chart, there is yet another FLD that is of particular interest. This is this yellow FLD over here, which is the 18-month cycle FLD. Notice how, at the end of October, price came down and found support at the level of the 18-month cycle FLD. When price finds support at the level of an FLD, it doesn't necessarily inform our analysis. In other words, we cannot say that because price found support at the level of the 18-month FLD, that means that that trough is of a particular magnitude. I would like to raise an interesting point, however, about that 18-month FLD, so let's zoom out and take a look. I have mentioned that the trough in October of last year is of at least 54-month magnitude, in my opinion. However, let's consider for a moment that it is an even longer cycle trough. If that was a trough of the nine-year cycle that formed in October of last year, then what interactions would we expect between price and the 18-month cycle FLD? We would expect price to cross up above the 18-month cycle FLD, which it did in rather a complicated fashion with these three interactions over here. That's what we call a complex interaction. That would be labeled our A category interaction, and it would generate a target to the upside, which was in fact reached. The next interaction would be when price comes down and finds support at the level of the 18-month cycle FLD at about the time that the 18-month cycle trough forms. Now, I've already pointed out that we only expect the 18-month cycle trough to form in early next year. And so this 18-month cycle FLD could be expected to provide support at that time. We do sometimes notice that price finds support before the formation of this trough at the level of the FLD. It's what we often label a double BC category interaction, but let's not get complicated. The interesting thing about this is the fact that price found support at the level of the 18-month cycle FLD as it formed this trough in October does raise the question of the magnitude of this cycle trough. I've mentioned that the magnitude of that trough could be 40 weeks, which would imply that this diamond or the phasing of this 40-week cycle trough should be displaced to the right. But here is an interesting question for us to ponder. Is it possible that this was, in fact, a very early manifestation of the 18-month cycle trough? If we measure the number of days, you will see there were 380 days. It sounds absurdly early, and most Hearst Cycles analysts would discard the possibility without much consideration. But it is an interesting thing to ponder as we watch price bouncing out of this trough at the end of October. I do hope you found this market update useful and interesting. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below the video or join us on our Hearst Cycles Discord server. I look forward to hearing from you.